Uh, Mr. Daniel, we, we want to get your own opinion of, of what uh, the sovereignty is about and, and with uh, the global changes that have occurred in, uh, in the world uh, uh, following the, the events we're talking about COVID-19, we're talking about the uh, Russia-Ukraine war and uh, other uh, major events uh, that have occurred around the global world. So in your own perspective, what do you think we can uh, coin or are the right terms to, to define or the right words to define the word uh, uh, sovereignty and is there any country that we can say is totally sovereign in this contemporary society looking at the, the, the global level? Well, I agree with my colleague that, you know, we, we go back to, uh, you know, definitions of sovereignty is considered in the UN Charter. Uh, which supports people's right to self-determination and to use their own resources for their own purposes and for their own people. And uh, if you look at it, that, that definition, most of the countries in the developing world and what we used to call the third world, Africa, Asia, Latin America, are still not truly sovereign and free, right? Because uh, the West in particular and the U.S. in particular continue to dominate those countries, to plunder those countries of their resources. You know, the United States, for example, has about 5% of the world's population and still monopolizes about 25% of the world's wealth. And it has done that through neo-colonial measures uh, and, frankly, through war through the murder of, of uh, leaders in other countries. Uh, the one that comes to mind uh, most significantly is Patrice Lumumba, who was murdered by Belgium in the United States in 1960, just as Congo was gaining its independence. And it has not been independent since, right? The West, through its you know client states like Rwanda and Uganda, continue to plunder Congo of its resources. Uh, but that's only one example. Uh, there are many other examples where the U.S. continues to engage in regime change and other violent measures in order to control other uh, uh, economies and resources. Uh, but we are seeing the potential now with the multipolar world that's emerging for countries to come from, you know, out from underneath that sort of domination. It is a very imperative uh, uh, to, to know and to understand uh, the, the changes that are uh, taking place uh, in the world. I don't know if uh, Mr. Uh, Arnold uh, Bavli has joined. Uh, of course, he, he will be joining us in the course of the program. I will continue with you, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Dunno. Let, let's look at uh, this perspective. Does the geopolitical uh, gamma uh, that has characterized the, the international uh, world and of course, we see uh, political ideologies, uh, of course. Uh, now, let's look at critically analyze uh, the gro uh, global crisis and how it is affecting uh, uh, the global cooperation between countries uh, at the international level. How has uh, uh, the, the, the geopolitical crisis occurring in the global world hijacked the international cooperation? Well, we see, you know, really the destruction of international cooperation. I mean, we now see this uh, very sharp rift between the West and the East in a way that we didn't even see during the first Cold War with the Soviet Union. You know, where now Russia is being completely cut off from the West. I was just in Russia and experienced this. You know, as an American, I can't use my bank card. I can't use my credit card. Uh, they have been totally cut off from the economic system of the West. Travel-wise, they've also been cut off. It's very hard now to travel to Russia. Um, again, we didn't even see this during the first Cold War. So you have this sharp rift between the West and the East. Uh, so in that sense, international cooperation has been greatly impacted negatively by recent events. At the same time, uh, what has happened is that now the East is on the rise, right? Russia, China in particular. And that gives the ability of uh, places like Africa to have alternative trading partners and alternative means of development 
which they are now seeking out. And this is very important because the U.S. has used its economic power to impose sanctions against something like a third of the world's population, really. Um, and they are able to do that because of dollar dominance. Well, now the ruble is gaining strength. This was surprise, a surprise result of the sanctions against Russia. The Chinese yuan is also gaining strength. And so now countries are turning to Russia and China, turning to their currencies to trade on. And this gives countries uh, an ability to become more independent. So you see really a couple different trends happening. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous.